Hi there, this is Jeff from HGS Trailers. I just want to go over a couple items here. I'll try to do a few videos and a few takes. Just to introduce you to uh, our wheel and hub. And I'll get over to the axle and we'll go over how to actually properly assemble uh, our hub onto our axle. But uh, starting uh, here, this is how the, the tire and hub comes uh, in our kit. Right? It's pre-assembled. These uh, lug nuts have not been fully torqued down, so just uh, understand that. Uh, and we'll introduce that again in our video as we get going further along here. But uh, if I could pop this dust cap off, right, special tool there helps with that. We'll take a quick look here at our hub. And what you'll see is there is actually a taper bearing here, and it's uh, packed with grease. Um, you just want to be careful because that taper bearing could come out. Some people prefer to actually take it out now rather than take the risk of it falling out through assembly, but. Regardless, if you look on the back half of the hub here, we have a seal, and in behind that seal is actually another taper bearing. We also have a grease nipple that uh, can help uh, for maintenance and service, uh, making us uh, able to uh, add grease to our, our hub and bearings. Um, but basically, that's it. I'll take you over and uh, we'll go over the axle. Okay, we're over here at the axle now. I just want to go over a couple of things. Uh, it comes with this bubble wrap uh, protection on the axle. We're going to unscrew our caster nut from there. You will notice that inside here, typically this is where they'll package the uh, cotter pins. You know, so make sure we remove those, have those ready, one for each side. And then we also have our thrust washer and castle nut. So we'll set those down. Now, uh, I've also described in the PowerPoint um, that you do want to polish this with a clean rag. Make sure that we get any uh, paint overspray, any debris, inspect our threads for any uh, loose burrs or anything. They're usually pretty good as they come, but we just want to make sure that we can get all those paint particles off there, especially on that raised shoulder. That's where our seal's going to ride. Uh, failure to get that off is just going to result in a bit of squeak, but uh, no big deal either way. Okay, we're now going to mount the hub onto our axle. We've got it nice and cleaned. Uh, as I'm assembling this, I want you to pay particular attention to this area you're going to see the seal take that raised shoulder part and you should see me push the wheel and the hub up right against that shoulder and that's basically what I'm looking for but uh, here we go you want to carefully align this and be very sure that you're not damaging your, your seal and as we square up the axle shaft onto our bearing it begins to slide nice and easy and here we go now we're actually close to our shoulder and what I'm going to do is start to press against this and I'm just rotating the wheel ever so slightly. Every now and then you get a stubborn one, and there you go. You see how a seal now rides right over top of that raised section. And if we come around to the outside here, we have to readjust. Now we've got uh, our axles pushed out quite a bit of the grease that was inside the hub. We're going to replace that later, no worries. Right? But what I'm going to do is just take that inner bearing and get it placed right inside of there. You do get your hands a bit dirty, so rubber gloves or have a rag nearby but then we put our thrust washer against there and what we want to do is just get our castle nut on here we just want to catch a couple threads and from here once I get my hands cleaned up I'll go over setting that up with the right uh, torque okay we're now ready to set the uh, correct torque for the castle nut here uh, basically what we're looking for is pretty much a Goldilocks situation uh, too loose and your hubs obviously free to wander too tight the bearings are going to be pre-stressed uh, and you know you can have bad things happen there as uh, excess heat will cause bearings to fail uh, but basically what you want to do you got two opposing tapered bearings and we just want to use this castle nut put pressure against that thrust washer make sure that the tapers uh, pull this hub true uh, and that we we have the proper clearance here uh, looking up the specs on these bearings you'll find that we're looking at 0.003 to 0 0.005 of an inch clearance and that's just enough that you you know you can feel a slight click in the wheel with by giving it some chuck but uh, you know spinning it it is free to move as well so at this point what most folks will do is actually begin to tighten this maybe rotate the wheel as well you'll see it it'll want to take that, that bearing with it and you know we got lots of room to go I only just had that castle nut placed on the on that threaded portion. When it begins to tighten up there, this is where we have to be careful. We do not want to over tight uh, torque anything onto those bearings. 
But as I take this, you know, I'm almost using two finger pressure here on my wrench. And I've, I've basically bottomed that out. Okay, so I will back this up. All right, make sure it's free. You can see I move it by hand. And I basically spin this again, you know, and that my bearings are kind of guiding me to make sure that this thing's lined up true. Okay, and by finger tight at that point, that's about the most I'd want to get. So at this point, you know, I remember my, uh, my hole here for my cotter pin is somewhere in this area. And I don't want to have it tighter than, than finger tight. So I'll back it off and I'll begin looking. There it is. So that's about what I want. So I went, used my wrench with about two fingers worth of tension, spun the wheel as well. My bearings helped guide me in there. I did not over torque or put too much pressure onto those bearings. Once I got to the point where it was two fingers of pressure on that wrench tight, I backed it up, went and played with it, finger tight, right? Got it to where I could get full pressure by fingers. And then I'm backing that castle nut to line my cotter pin into the first uh, slot that will allow it to take that. Now again, I'm to get my hands cleaned up. I'll show you how to lock that cotter pin into place, put the dust cap on, and we're basically done. Okay, for sake of the video, I'm going to forego showing the grease, but before we put the dust cap on, on the outside, I, I typically pump these hubs full of as much grease as possible, right? If I have a grease cap on there and I'm pumping full of grease, you end up uh, creating a, a, a grease missile, basically. The pressure will build up, your, your grease cap will pop off along with all your grease onto the floor and you get yourself a mess to clean up. But for sake of the video, I'll finish it here. Uh, just understand this is a portion where you would pump that hub full as much grease as possible. But what I like to do is I'll take the longer stem of my uh, cotter pin here, I'll bend it up and over, and I want to press that square against my axle, just like so. Then what I do with a pair of offset needle nose, is I just grab the inside of this and bend it inwards, right? Just to make sure I've uh, cleared the outer side of my hub. Now all that's left, put a dust cap on the outside, line it up. Hammered on good as tight, all right? I'll clean that up, probably give it a couple good whacks, uh, make sure we're on there, and we're done. Okay, one final thought here with regards to our hub and our bearings. Uh, constantly, you know, we'll have customers that'll contact us and ask us, uh, how do I check my bearings? How do I uh, get an indication whether they need service or not? And I'll just tell you, first and foremost, uh, grease is your friend. So, uh, you know, a, a pump full, full of grease before you hit the road, that's always uh, a welcome uh, um, item to consider. Uh, also, if you are on a trip, right, you stop. If you get out and immediately kind of take two fingers and check your hub for heat, uh, heat is an indication that there could be some type of uh, failure going on inside your, your hub. And these are e extreme and rare conditions as well. Uh, this being a folding trailer, you can also, when you fold it up for storage, grab your tire, right, give it a little chuck, that side to side twisting. And if you feel any play, if you feel it kind of clunk, clunk, moving side to side, uh, that's telling you there's something being investigated as well. There really shouldn't be a whole lot of play with your chuck. There should be no heat whatsoever. And as long as you're putting grease in there, uh, checking on your bearings every so often, you should have no worries whatsoever.